It's a great pleasure to have everyone here on such a happy occasion. Uh, I see our distinguished guest who was supposed to be here is not yet here, Professor Reinhardt, who is president of Brandeis. I hope he'll be here shortly. Also, I'd like to welcome uh, President Chebanian, President Emeritus Silva, about whom you'll hear more in a moment, Mrs. Marion Wiesel, Mr. and Mrs. Ira Rennett, again, about whom I'll return shortly. Before I do that and say anything else, I'd like to ask David Campbell, who's the provost of the university, very distinguished scholar, to say a few words of greeting. David? Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon and welcome to the dedication of the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies. The beautiful building behind me has a rich history with origins dating back to 1900 and architectural details culled from a neo-baroque country home designed by a renowned English architect of that time. Boston University acquired the building in December 1941 and converted this ornate mansion into the College of Practical Arts and Letters. It then served as a faculty club in the 1950s and in the 1970s until 2004 housed Dr. John Silver's presidential offices and the trustees' boardroom. Now, through the wonderful generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Ira Rennert, it is the new permanent home of the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies. Just as this building is replete with historical references and international flavor, so too is the foundation and focus of the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies. The center coordinates and supports academic programs relating to Judaic studies here at Boston University, integrating Jewish history, literature, and thought into a multi-dimensional curriculum and sponsoring conferences, lectures, and special events that appeal to a broad intellectual community. Professor Wiesel is a noted human rights activist, professor, author, and lecturer. He was the recipient of the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1986, is the founder of the Elie Wiesel Foundation for Humanity, is the Andrew W. Mellon Professor in the Humanities here at Boston University, and is the author of numerous books and recipient of numerous literary awards. This multi-dimensional structure with its layers of historical reference now houses a center that also encompasses layers of intellectual pursuit and scholarly endeavors. It is most fitting that the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies, under the direction of Dr. Stephen Katz, continues this tradition of enriching the curriculum of Boston University and the minds of the students and greater community. I am most pleased to welcome you into this new home. Ruchim Habayim. Thank you very much, David. Your Hebrew is fine. Toda. Uh, an occasion like this and all the work that's gone into creating the center in its new home this year has been enormous. And there are a number of people I'd like to thank. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank Rachel Strauss, who's Professor Wiesel's assistant, who helps in all kinds of ways, and his former assistant, Martha Hauptman, who's been a great help when we planned the move and was even kind enough to come in today to help because she knew an extra hand would be welcome. So thank you, Martha. I'd also like to thank Colleen McGinty and all the grounds crew and staff here. And also, and most importantly, my own assistant, Padgel Zoka. I can't tell you the number of hours, the dedication, the enormous commitment to make sure that everything is right here at the center. I don't think anyone could possibly have done a job like she's done, so I'm deeply in her debt, and I thank her very much, Padgel. Also, we've had the good fortune since the center was created to have received several major gifts that I'd just like to acknowledge today. First, Mr. Mike Grossman was kind enough to give us a substantial fund to create a special endowment to hold major conferences. We've had two so far, one on the shtetl and one on the American Jewish community on its 350th anniversary. And both of those will become books with New York University Press the first one is already in the works. Secondly, I'd like to thank Mr. Alan Leventhal, who's now the chairman of the Board of Trustees here at Boston University. Mr. Leventhal gave us a major gift, and that allows us especially to bring visitors, to hold a lecture series, and to have visiting professors, which otherwise would not be here. 
Last year, we were fortunate enough to have Professor Ehud Luz of Haifa and Professor Yuda Fu of Shandong University, where they're now building a major center of Jewish studies in China. So you get Chinese food and Jewish studies, both of which are authentic in Shandong. Thirdly, uh, I'd like to thank and uh, very much thank Mr. and Mrs. Alvin Slater. The Slaters have very generously made a commitment to create the Slater Chair in Jewish Studies, a new chair, the first of its kind here at BU, and that will allow us to add still further faculty in an area where we presently are not able to teach, and so we are really indebted to all three of these uh, major benefactors. We thank them very much. Today's occasion is the result of the collaboration of four special people. Professor Emeritus, uh, President Emeritus John Silva, Mr. Ira and Mrs. Ingeborg Rennett, and Professor Elie Wiesel. President Silva has been a friend and supporter of Jewish studies and all things Jewish on this campus since his arrival as president 30 years ago. The growth of the Campus Hillel Foundation that culminated in the creation of its beautiful new building last spring and the growth of the Academic Judaic Studies program is due in large part to his vision and support. Already in the 1970s, he recruited such world-class scholars as Professor Gashem Sholem of the Hebrew University and Professor Nachum Glatzer of Brandeis University to teach here at Boston University. Professor Sholem came in 74, and Professor Glatzer came to head the Judaic Studies program in the mid-70s. In 1996, when I came to Boston University, President Silva made a further commitment to the growth of the program. He has not only kept that commitment, but has regularly exceeded it. For example, we have been able to build, with the university support and the support of Mr. Hudson, the university librarian, more than 25,000 new Judaica volumes for Mughal Library in the last nine years. We've been able to hire and tenure several superb younger scholars teaching in central areas of Jewish studies without need of special outside funding. And now, along with Professor Hillel Levine and Ezra Mendelssohn and our Hebrew language staff, we have in place a very formidable Judaic faculty. In 2003, President Silber wrote a piece for Bostonia, the alumni magazine of the university, from which I would like to quote. Boston University needs a center for Judaic studies because without a program in Judaic studies, Boston University will not, in the proper sense of the word, be a university at all, any more than it could be a university without a program in classics. Our world culture is profoundly dependent upon the Jewish culture that has shaped the moral vision, not only of the Jews, but of Muslims and Christians. We are all people of the book. And he concluded with this commitment. Boston University must have a center for Judaic studies, and it will have a great one. These sentiments express better than I could President Silber's profound concern for what we do here at the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies. And then there is Dr. Silber's extraordinary friendship with Professor Elie Wiesel. As I understand the story, President Silber, already familiar with Elie Wiesel's books, sent someone to tape a lecture at Brandeis University in 1974. Soon thereafter, in 1976, he brought Elie Wiesel to teach permanently at Boston University, a relationship that has now lasted 30 years. In these three decades, President Silber and Professor Wiesel have formed a unique friendship. It is a result of this deep friendship and because of Professor Wiesel's very special status that President Silber officially encouraged the changing of the name of the Judaic Studies program at Boston University to the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies and sought to have the magnificent building at 145 Bay State Road behind me which had served for nearly three decades as his administrative offices become the center of our new home. In addition, he was centrally involved in the efforts that resulted in the universities receiving a munificent gift from Mr. and Mrs. Ira Rennett that funded all the repairs and refurbishing of the building 
so that it could be updated and restored and become, in fact, the Elie Wiesel Center. For all these reasons and others, I would like to thank President Silber on this occasion for his unwavering support and to assure him that in this beautiful building, Judaic studies at Boston University will continue to go from strength to strength. Thank you, Dr. Silber. The second uh, important partner in this venture were Mr. and Mrs. Ira Rennett. Mr. Rennett and his wife, Ingeborg, are major Jewish philanthropists. In the noble tradition of affluent Jews over the millennia, they have freely chosen to support a whole host of charitable and educational institutions in the United States and Israel. Among the many institutions they have helped are Bar Ilan University, various colleges for Orthodox Jewish women, hospitals in Israel and the United States, and dozens of synagogues for which they have purchased Sifrei Torah, Torah scrolls. And this list of good causes in which they have generously contributed could easily be extended. In addition, Mr. and Mrs. Rennett have become part of the Boston University family through their close personal friendship with Professor Wiesel. Starting from a casual conversation, the Rennets and Wiesels have developed a deep and abiding relationship. When Mr. Rennett was informed of the creation of the newly named Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies, he and his wife stepped forward and provided a major gift to endow the center and to support the move to this new building. It is no exaggeration to say that without their generosity and support, we would not be having this dedication, and we are deeply grateful. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Rennett. Would you please stand up so we could all thank you. Come on. Thank you very much. And now we come to Professor Wiesel, after whom the center is named, and whose truly remarkable life and career we celebrate today. A teenage survivor of Auschwitz, he has become a living symbol, the preeminent witness to that evil time and place. Since the publication of Night in French in 1958, that was preceded by a longer version in Yiddish in 1956, he has committed himself both to keeping alive the memory of that hellish world and to transforming that memory into something positive through continuous, dedicated humanitarian activity on behalf of victims of organized evil around the world. To that end, he has spoken out against apartheid in South Africa and in support of the Ache Indians in Paraguay. He has sought to help the disappeared in Argentina, the displaced Cambodian boat people, the ravaged civilian population of the war-torn former Yugoslavia, and the brutalized and murdered Tutsi of Rwanda. In his Nobel Prize speech, he concluded his remarks with this observation. There may be times when we are powerless to prevent injustice, but there must never be a time when we fail to protest. We may be powerless to open all the jails and free all the prisoners, but by declaring our solidarity with one prisoner, we indict all jailers. And, importantly, he has defended Jewish interests everywhere, from the former Soviet Union, where his moving book, The Jews of Silence, was central to the liberation, the liberalization of Russian emigration policy, to the plight of Jews in Arab lands, to the state of Israel. I would like to note that the Nobel Prize money that he was awarded was used to create the Elie Wiesel Foundation, which, overseen by Mrs. Marion Wiesel, does extraordinary work in Israel with, among other groups, Ethiopian Jewish children. In recognition of Elie's government efforts, governments and major organizations around the world have honored him, with awards reigning from the Presidential Medal of Freedom to the Nobel Peace Prize. This is the rightly extolled, much sought after Professor Elie Wiesel in public. The friend of presidents, presidents of several countries I might say, and the advisor to kings. 
Did you get the call from Prince Abdullah this afternoon, Ellie? Just this afternoon, Prince Abdullah of Jordan called uh, for Professor Wiesel, wanted to invite him to something. But here at Boston University since 1976, we have had the privilege to know a more intimate, a more personal Elie Wiesel, to know him as a teacher, a colleague, and a friend. His courses are memorable experience that leave students changed forever. For Professor Wiesel, teaching is a calling, a sharing, a joint search, an adventure, not a task or a job. He fulfills the description of the true teacher whose students, to quote the Hasidic master, the great Margaret of Meseret said, the teacher is one from whom the students learn all kinds of things, things in his presence, through his will, or without it. In his classes, which are conducted as dialogues in search of meaning, Professor Wiesel has the gift of valuing every student and of making every one of them feel as if they were special. His help, advice, recommendations, and support are always freely and happily given. Long after his students have forgotten most of what they've learned in other courses, they will remember the few hours they had the, privileges, the privilege of studying with him. And the same can be said for the interaction with the faculty and staff here at Boston University. In a quiet way, Professor Wiesel is always willing to support colleagues with sage advice, write crucial letters of recommendation, or make a helpful call to a publisher, a dean, or a president. These private, regular acts of generosity and kindness are as much part of the man as his major public actions and are the reasons he creates such abiding admiration and affection from those who work with him on a daily basis. Furthermore, in all his dealings, he is a person who seeks what we call shalom bayat, peace, between neighbors, colleagues, and family. Having the privilege to be the director of the Wiesel Center, I will only add that Professor Wiesel is an active, generous partner in every major activity we undertake, and for this I am more than grateful. I would conclude by reminding everyone that the building that is to be the new home of the Elie Wiesel Center is to be named Bet Shlomo and Sarah, in memory of Professor Wiesel's father and mother who were murdered in the Holocaust. His father at Buchenwald and his mother and beloved younger sister Tzipora at Birkenau. It appears, given what Professor Wiesel has reported, that his parents enjoyed a special bond, for he has no memory of them ever quarreling or bickering. As he tells us in his memoirs, quote, they loved each other, and nothing ever clouded that love. Ellie remembers his parents as being both kind and generous, always helping those in need. Though the children grew up in a place and time where, to quote Professor Wiesel, quote, even seemingly well-off Jews lived on the age, edge of poverty, his parents never stopped feeding anyone who was hungry. He remembers that, quote, one day a week, a huge cauldron of bean soup would be put in the yard for beggars roaming from village to village. I had no way of knowing that my father often had to borrow money to make it the end, to the end of the month. My mother never complained. Specifically of his father, he has written, I admired him, feared him, and loved him intensely. He, in turn, genuinely loved all people. He was famous for his intelligence, his perspicacity, and his kindness. People turned to him for advice. Patient and tolerant, he would see anyone for any reason, listening with the same attentiveness to the rich and the poor, friend or stranger. His views mattered. His advice was invariably followed. And of his calm, pious, and loving mother, Sarah, he tells us that as a child, quote, I was attached to my mother, maybe too attached. The only blessing that meant anything was my mother's. So this afternoon, as we remember Shlomo and Sarah Wiesel in front of the building that will bear witness to their names, let me close with the words that Professor Wiesel tells us his father frequently repeated, quote, you can never give too much to the needy or study too much. For generations to come, this building, Bet Shlomo and Sarah, will be a place of serious study, and we hope also of good deeds. 
In the traditional Jewish idiom of remembrance, we say of Ellie's parents, may their memory be for a blessing. Thank you. I'd like now to ask President Silva to say a few words. The dedication of the Bet Shlomo and Sarah uh, to house the Elivizel Center for Judaic Studies is the fulfillment of a 30-year dream. Uh, Elivizel uh, was a target of opportunity when I came to Boston University, and it began with the awarding of an honorary degree in 1974. He could not be persuaded to join our faculty at that time, but he joined our faculty in 1975 and inaugurated the series of lectures that will begin again tonight in its 30th year. This is the 30th anniversary, as far as I'm concerned, of a dream, and that dream was to establish the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies. We began before Elie Wiesel came and I had been here since 1971, uh, to recruit Jewish scholars and to enhance Jewish scholarship on this campus, recognizing that approximately one-third of our student body was of Jewish heritage, and at least a third of our faculty also shared that heritage. Consequently, as I told Abe Sacker, the president of Brundeis, Boston University has more Jewish students than all of the students in Brandeis and more Jewish faculty members than all of the faculty in Brandeis several times over. Uh, and uh, Abe Sacker was amused by it, but he said Boston University was not sponsored by the Jewish community, and it has been my dream through the Elevizel Center to redeem that deficiency, because this center is being supported by and sponsored by the Jewish community. I am particularly grateful for the housing of this center in this particular location, in 147 Bay State Road. This building is the most beautiful building from an architectural standpoint on the campus of Boston University, including all of the detailed fittings uh, that one sees in, throughout the building. It would not have been possible to use this building for this purpose, because when one preempts space there are a large number of departments, uh, the, the faculty of which have their noses out of joint. But when we had a good reason for selecting this building and turning away others who were aspiring to, it, to its occupation, it was because of the generosity of Mr. and Mrs. Ira Rennert. Through their gift, we were able to refurbish this building, uh, and their gift will be sufficient to support other activities of the Elie Wiesel Center in the years ahead. Their decision to support the Elie Wiesel Center for Judaic Studies was marked by the suggestion that they made, and that was to name this house in which the center is occupied in honor of Elie Wiesel's parents. This was a request and a suggestion that we were very happy to accept and it, it, it makes the center uh, more appropriate and fitting, since it bears the, bear, bears the name of Elie Wiesel, that the house in which it stands and in which these functions take place is named for his parents. It wouldn't have been possible without the generosity and also the thoughtfulness and sensitivity of the Rennerts and of the other individuals who have been generous in their support of this program. We are just beginning the development of this center since the infusion of additional funds. And I am sure that the reach, the outreach of this center and the importance of the work done here will be substantially enhanced. It's important to remember that Quite outside the center and in various departments and divisions of Boston University, there are scholars working on themes of importance to Jews and to Judaica. For example, Professor Hecht of our law school has developed a major center uh, for the study of Jewish law, and his affiliation with the center adds 
a very substantial dimension to its offerings. Uh, that possibility uh, has also been uh, present in a wide variety of other areas. So, as I said, uh, the dedication of this building and the formal dedication of the center uh, has been the realization of a dream that I have had for 30 years, and it gives me enormous pleasure to be able to be here tonight to thank those who have made it possible. And last, but by no means least, Professor Elie Wiesel. Provost Campbell, Steve, John, Ira and Inge, and friends. You can imagine my emotion today. Uh, I prefer to speak in a classroom, not outside. But this is a very special place. It became a special place. Now, of course, I'm grateful. But you must also know, you remember Rabbi Akiba and Rachel, when Rabbi Akiba said about Rachel, his wife, he said it in the Talmud, Shalih Veshalachem Shalah. When they gave him all the honors that he deserved, he said, whatever is mine and yours actually belongs to her. And the same thing is with Marion. Marion, whatever I have done in life since I got married uh, and became a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that she became a grandmother because she's too young for that, but you know. It's all, all that really is, she, she was a partner and... and close. Uh, the closest I ever could come to anyone is, of course, to, to Mario. So um, to all of you, I thank you very, very much. And uh, Ira and Inge, what can I say? We have been friends since we, we met, really. And the fact that it was your idea to name this house in my father's and mother's name moves me more than you can imagine, for reasons that you understand. You know. Uh, for these circumstances, the fact that um, you know they, together with millions of other Jewish men, women, and children, that, that they have no graves, uh, and here you have a place with two names, their names, it means something, and uh, and it's not on a grave. On the contrary, it's on a place of study and learning, and my commitment to and my love for learning. Uh, my students know it, and I, I hope that those who are, are good enough to read my books, know it. I, I love learning. It's even, learning is even better than study somehow. It, it is a different word, it, it, learning the Talmud. And, and the Talmud, we have two expressions. One is Tseyul Mat, Zilgemor, go, go and study. And the other end is Tashemat, come and listen. And that's exactly what learning is. You go and study and you come and listen. And we learn, of course, how to listen. And I listen to my students, and I hope they listen to me. But one thing is when you think of the, and I think, of course, of, of the names, the names of, of those that, that the building is named for. The last time I saw my mother or my father. So I hope that this center will really produce an atmosphere of, of profound passion a passion for learning. And that passion should be a passion that is being shared, shared by teachers and students alike. A passion that elevates rather than humiliates. A passion that ennobles all those who take part in it. And so, really, to you, Provost and Steve and John, of course, and Ira, Inge, I, I, I'm filled with gratitude, and, and as for teaching, come tonight. Thank you. First of all, thank you, uh, President Silber and Professor Wiesel. In closing, it's only fitting that a building named after Rabbi Shlomo ben Eliezer and Sarah ben Rebdodia should have a mezuzah a symbol of God's providence on its door. I would like to ask Professor Wiesel, and I'll ask all of you to come forward, to affix the mezuzah and make the traditional blessing that accompanies this action. 
After the mezuzahs are fixed, I invite everyone to a very nice kosher reception on the second floor of the center. Also, please feel free to look around the building. Thank you for coming.